Hi everyone, my name is Jolie McCreary and this video is for AP Psychology students. In this particular video, I'll be introducing Unit 1, which is the biological basis of behavior with a discussion about the interaction between heredity and the environment. Since this is the first video in our Unit 1 series, I want you to see an overview of the major topics that are addressed in Unit 1. As you know, this video will cover the interaction between heredity and the environment, and it's the first topic listed in our Unit 1 series called Biological Basis of Behavior. I also want you to notice that this particular unit, Unit 1, is said to make up 15 to 25 percent of the overall content on the AP Psychology exam. After watching this video on interaction between heredity and the environment, students should be able to answer the following key focus questions. Students should also be able to define the following essential concepts that are listed here after watching this video. So as I mentioned at the start of this video, this will be the foundation for Unit 1, and we will focus on how heredity and the environment influence who we are, our behaviors, and our thought processes. So first, let's define those concepts. Heredity refers to the genetic characteristics that are passed down to us through the biological ancestors that we have. An environment is referring to our surroundings. These are non-genetic influences. Things like our families, our uh, friends, our school environment, our societies and cultures, and even our nutrition and diet. Now, because humans have so many factors that influence them, it's hard to tell which directly relates to the behaviors and the thought process we have. And if we were going to try to draw conclusions about whether it's genes or our environments that are causing that particular personality trait, it would be very, very difficult, especially because we couldn't control for those particular things in an experimental setting with humans. So this leads us to the debate called nature versus nurture. Nature just refers to heredity and nurture refers to our environment. And this has been a longstanding question in psychology that just leads to more questions. Today, we wonder, is it our genes? Is it our um, society? What is it that's making us who we are, that's influencing us to act a certain way? And so this is the major theme of today's lesson, nature versus nurture. So as you likely remember from the unit one lesson on perspectives in psychology, evolutionary psychology is focusing on the principle of natural selection and how that influences our behaviors and our thought processes. Now behaviors or traits that previously helped prior generations, evolutionary psychologists believe that we have maintained those particular behaviors or traits because it helped our ancestors survive and it's ensuring that we have the best chance of survival. And this is a really important concept when we're thinking about genes and heredity. Evolutionary psychologists would say that natural selection has played a large role in those behaviors that we have. Now, unfortunately, there have been instances in history where elements of this evolutionary perspective have been misused to justify uh, discriminative and harmful behaviors. And so that's why we need to remember to use ethical considerations when we're doing scientific research. So as you can see at the top of the screen, the text box that's labeled 1.182 says that the College Board not only wants AP Psychology students to explain the evolutionary perspective, but also tell how it was misused to support a movement called eugenics. The eugenics movement emerged from ideas about genetics and natural selection. Eugenicists aimed to control the human race through manipulating and controlling reproduction. Their goal was to create future generations that had the physical, mental, behavior, and social traits that they wanted. And they also wanted to eliminate certain individuals from reproducing so that they could have that desired genetic race. Now, sterilization was the process they used to do this. They used four sterilizations. Sterilizations are medical procedures that prevent individuals from reproducing. And they claimed they could eliminate behaviors like promiscuity, criminality, um, cognitive deficiencies by stopping certain individuals from reproducing. 
And these procedures were legal in the United States up until about the 1970s and could be conducted without the individual's consent. In the United States, these forced sterilizations disproportionately affected marginalized and vulnerable populations, um, like people of color, people living in poverty, immigrants, especially from Southern and Eastern Europe, women and individuals with disabilities. Now, this is no longer legal in the United States, um, especially after the atrocities that were committed in Nazi Germany were exposed, people began to criticize the eugenics movement. But it wasn't until the 1970s that this was completely eradicated in the United States and made fully illegal. Now, some states have come to apologize and even offer reparations to victims. But this is a historical example that serves as a cautionary tale to psychology students about the importance of upholding ethical standards, protecting vulnerable populations from harm and from remaining vigilant um, about the misuse of scientific ideas and not allowing them to be used for pseudoscientific purposes. So today the field of behavior genetics is seeking to examine the role of genes and environmental roles in our human behavior. And this discipline is combining the principles of genetics, psychology, and biology to really explore how all of these factors like upbringing and culture and life experiences and genetics are all working together to make us who we are. To scientifically tease apart the influences of environment and heredity, behavioral geneticists would love to do one of two things. They'd love to be able to control heredity while varying different home environments or control home environments while varying heredity. This would help them better understand what behavioral traits are directly tied to the differences in our environment and directly tied to our genetic makeup. But obviously, we couldn't do this ethically with humans, but these situations actually do occur naturally in real life without experimental intervention, and these happen in the cases of twins. So first, let's talk about the different type of twins before we get into twin studies. So identical twins or monozygotic twins share identical DNA because they came from the same zygote or the same egg. So for lack of better words, words, they are the same. They were born with the same genetic material. Dizygotic twins or fraternal twins are born together, but they are born from two zygotes or two eggs and two sperm. So their DNA is similar because they have the same biological parents, but they don't have the exact same DNA because they came from two separate eggs and two separate sperm. Now, by examining how identical twins are more similar to one another compared to fraternal twins in various different traits and behaviors, researchers can estimate the heritability of different traits or the extent to which the genetic factors are influencing them. Additionally, studying twins who were raised apart versus those who were raised together can also help isolate the impact of environmental factors by providing a clearer picture of how both genetics and environment are contributing to human behavior. So hopefully you remember from Unit Zero that a case study is a research method in which a psychologist studies a group of people or one individual person in depth and does a detailed report on their particular situation, but for ethical or practical reasons couldn't replicate this particular situation. However, we know that observations from case studies can be very valuable. So this brings us to the case study of separated twins. When identical twins are separated and raised in different homes, psychologists can use this real world situation as a case study to observe how genes and environment might play a role in our personalities, our interests, our temperaments, and our tendencies. Now, genet genetically, identical twins are the same. They are different people, but they share the same genetic makeup. And any differences they might have when they are raised in different environments, if their personalities are different or if their um, tendencies are different, we might be able to make the connection that there is a relationship between their environment and those differences any similarities, we might be able to say that those might be linked with their genetics. So let's take a look at the case study of the Bogota twins. 
Now, the Bogota brothers are two sets of identical twins, and you can see the picture of them in this 2015 photograph that comes from an article from the New York Times Magazine. In 1988, in a hospital in Bogota, there was an error that caused two sets of identical twins to be mistakenly switched. Each set of parents went home with one of their biological sons and a son from the other family, and they believed they had been taking home their fraternal twins, when in actuality they were only taking home one of their biological sons and one of another. Now, these sets of twins grew up in different settings. One set grew up in a rural village while the other was raised in a city. And miraculously, the twins found each other 25 years later. And much to their surprise, the boys found out that they were strikingly similar to their identical twin that they had just met, not only in their appearance, but also in their personality and in their behavior traits. So despite their different environments, William and Jorge both were physically strong, supportive, and described as jokesters, even though they had not been raised together. The identical twins, Wilbur and Carlos, who also were raised separately but were identical twins, shared the same speech impediment, were both described as serious, moody, prone to crying, but were very organized. This story of the Bogota brothers is not unique, and there are other examples of separated twins who have shown striking similarities in their behavior, their interests, their temperaments upon reuniting later in life. While these case studies are fascinating and give us insights into nature versus nurture, they are just anecdotes. So conclusive statements about causality require controlled settings, but twin researchers still find this very valuable and feel like this is valuable contributions to our discussion about nature versus nurture. Outside of twin studies, adoption studies also offer valuable insights into the influence of biology and environment on individuals. Adoption studies create two groups, a genetic relatives group, which are the biological parents and siblings, as well as a group of environmental relatives, which are the adoptive parents and the adoptive siblings. And researchers can explore whether the adopted children resemble their biological parents or the adoptive parents, and whether the adopted siblings who share a similar environment but not the same genetics exhibit similar traits. And findings reveal that adopted children that are raised together typically do not resemble one another much in personality, but traits like um, uh, extroversion and agreeableness, those tend to be more similar between the adopted individual and their biological parent. So to summarize what we've covered so far, here are a few key points. Studies on identical and fraternal twins, separated twins and biological uh, versus adopted families can allow researchers to study the influence of shared environments and shared genes, and this can shed light on the extent to which nature and nurture are influencing our traits. New developments in technology and the advancement in genetic studies have allowed us to see that the two factors of our heredity and our environment not only independently influence us, but they actually interact with one another. And this is called the study of epigenetics. Epigenetics looks at how our environment and the things that we are exposed to in our surroundings can affect our genes and how they express themselves. So essentially, epigenetics explains how environmental exposures impact how our cells read their biological instruction codes or our genes. And this in turn affects our behavior, our health, and our development. And a compelling example of epigenetics was seen in the Kelly twins who are both NASA astronauts. When Scott Kelly spent a year in space, his identical twin, Mark, remained on Earth, and then scientists observed significant differences in their gene expressions and their physiological traits when they were in these very, very different environments. When Scott returned to Earth, researchers studied his biological systems and they compared them to his brother, Mark, and researchers found that Scott had changes in his gene expression, his immune response, and other biological networks like DNA repair, um, bone formation systems, and even his telomere lengths. So this is believed to be influenced by the differences in their environment that was exposing 
one of the twins to microgravity and radiation while the other was exposed to Earth's atmosphere and Earth's gravity. So this is an example that highlights how our environmental factors can actually alter and interact with our gene expression. And that shows us that even things that we might not realize like our diet, stress, trauma can actually influence our genetic activity. So to close out this lesson, let's do a few short review questions. Remember, as we've done before, I'll read the question aloud, but you'll need to pause the video to determine the correct answer. And I will reveal the right answers on the last slide. So the first question says, which of the following illustrates how a researcher might examine the influence of nature on behavior? Question number two says, Dr. Bond studies how population characteristics change over time based on how surviving members of a species pass on their genes to future generations. Dr. Bond studies Dr. Privet examines how non-genetic factors impact behavior to better understand the role of. And the last question says, which of the following concepts is an example of using evolutionary principles in a discriminatory way? So this concludes part one, interaction between heredity and the environment in the unit one series for biological basis of behavior. You can check the answers to the multiple choice questions below. Also be sure that you can answer the questions on the right hand side of the screen and define the essential concepts at the bottom.